Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here, and today I'm gonna to run through a tutorial in Adobe Photoshop to create this neon sign. It's actually not too complex, and the only painting it requires is drawing a few dots, but I think you do wind up with some nice details. I'm gonna show you how to build the back of the sign and get some good gritty metal in there. We'll look at how you can really push Photoshop to give us these bright, saturated glows in the neon, and finally we'll glue the whole thing together with just a little bit of hazy atmosphere. That's all coming up, let's get started. All right, getting started with a new document here, and I'm gonna set the width to 3840 and the height to 2160 pixels, which is 4K resolution. It's on the larger size, but that'll give me room to get some nice detail in there. And I'm gonna set the background color to black and create. So first thing I'll do is get some type going, T for my type tool, and I'll set the color up here to white. And this is a font called Miniola. This will work with just about any font, although you'll want something that's at least a medium weight. If the letter forms get too narrow, you won't be left with any room for the neon. And I'm gonna scale that up with a Command T for transform, and I can hold the Option key to scale symmetrically, and I'll just eyeball it to the center. Something like that looks about right. Return. And I'm just gonna put one more layer in here with another detail. I'll just create a big fat underline. That'll give me something to put another color neon in. So M for the marquee tool, and then I'll just drag out a rectangle, something like that. And I'll press D to set my colors to default. White is my background color, so I can use Command Delete to fill that with white. And then these two separate layers, I'm just gonna combine them into a single layer and treat them as one big shape to create the neon sign. I'll shift select the text layer, then I can use Command E to merge the layers. And I'm gonna rename that layer Sign. All right, and next I'm gonna get some metal texture going in here. I'm opening this Texture Labs Metal 146. Some good scratches and rust going on in here. I'll Command A to select all, Command C to copy, then Command W to close that one, and I'm gonna paste it right on top here, Command V. And I want this texture to live only inside of the letters. I'll do that by creating a clipping mask. So I'll hover my cursor in between the two layers and give it an option click, creating a clipping mask, which is just a name for this new group of layers. Then I'm gonna transform the texture with Command T and I just wanna scale it down, maybe move it a little and find a good place for it inside of the letters. Something about like that looks good. Then I'm gonna want this part of the metal sign to be much darker. I'm gonna do that with a levels adjustment layer. I'll go to my adjustment layers menu and select levels. And I'm also gonna want to include that in the clipping mask to be sure it only ever affects these layers. So I'll option click to include the levels in the clipping mask. Then up here in the properties tab for the levels adjustment, I'll drag the white output level here all the way down to 60. All right, next I'm gonna apply just one effect here to give the sign a bit of a defined edge. I'll select the sign layer down here and go to my effects menu and stroke. I'll reset to defaults, then all I'm gonna do is change the fill type down here to pattern. And I'm gonna select this kind of wobbly noise pattern and bring the scale of it as high as it'll go, which is 1000%. And let's bring the opacity back a little bit to 70% and okay. so. That just gave me some nice random edges. It's a fairly subtle detail, but feels kind of like sharp metal and gives a little definition to the edge. All right, now on to the fun part, creating the neon. So I'll start by going to the very top of my layer stack here and I'm gonna create a new layer and I will name this layer Neon. Then I wanna make a selection in the shape of the sign layer. So I'll hover over that layer's thumbnail and give it a command click. So now I've got these marching ants showing me I've got a selection in the shape of the sign layer and I'm gonna create the path of the neon by using the selection, but first I'm gonna make a few modifications to it. I'll go up into the menu here to select, modify, and contract. Then I'm gonna set this contract to 12 pixels. Okay, and next I'll go back into the same menu, select, modify, and this time choose smooth. And I'll smooth it by eight pixels. All right, and I'll zoom in a bit here. That's looking like the neon shape I want. So next I'm gonna draw a line along that path with edit, stroke. Now I'm gonna set the width to just two pixels. For now, this will just be a thin line. It's not meant to be the full width of the neon tube. So two pixels, and I'm gonna set the color here to white. Location should be set to center and blending mode normal at 100% opacity. So okay, then Command D to deselect. 
So that is my starting point, but I'm really gonna turn it into neon using a few effects. So in my effects menu down here, the first thing I'll select is stroke. Then I'll reset that to defaults and I'm gonna set the position to outside, then bring the size up to five pixels. And I'll change the color here to a really, really light blue, something about like that. So, okay. Now this stroke effect is actually creating the full width of the neon tubing. And the reason for using stroke to do that rather than just drawing that initial line wider to begin with, you'll have to bear with me because that reason will become apparent in just another minute. But first I wanna get some glow going here. So I'm gonna select another effect. I'm gonna turn on outer glow. I'll reset that to defaults. And then I'm gonna change the blend mode to linear dodge. And I'll bring the opacity all the way up to 100%. Then I'm going to change the color to as saturated of a blue as I can get. Something like that. Okay. Then I'll set the spread to 20% and the size to 30 pixels. All right. I want to create yet another glow, one that sort of spills way off the edges here, but I have a problem. Photoshop will not allow you to use more than one instance of outer glow. Some of these effects have a little plus button next to them, meaning you can double or triple up on the effect. Outer glow does not have that option, but what I can do is actually use drop shadow to create a glow. All I have to do is select drop shadow here and I'll reset to defaults. Then I'm gonna change the blend mode from multiply to linear dodge. And I'll change the color from black to this saturated blue again. And for this larger glow, I'm gonna set the color to a slightly cooler blue. I actually think it can make things a bit more natural looking when the colors of the glows aren't necessarily an exact match. So something like that and then I'll crank the opacity all the way up to 100%, and I'm gonna set the distance to zero, the spread to 10, and here I'm gonna bring the size all the way up to 200 pixels. And there we go, an extra glow. So that'll do it for the effects, I'll hit okay. All right, so starting to look like neon, but neon's not really neon until it has those little gaps in it, the places where it kind of plugs into the sign. So I'm gonna to start to break up the path of the neon using a layer mask. My neon layer is still selected. I'm gonna click on the layer mask button to create a mask. And I'll just mask out the areas where I want the breaks to be by painting them out. I'll press B for my brush tool, then D to set my colors to default, and X to reverse those, making black the foreground color. Then I'll right click and set the brush to 30 pixels and bring the hardness up to 100%. Then I'll zoom in a bit and I'm just gonna make my way around the neon here and just give it a single click to paint into the mask and create some gaps in the neon. And you can see there's something really cool happening as I paint these spots out in the mask. I'm not ending up with any hard corners. I'm automatically getting this nice natural rounded end on the neon. So how is that working? Well, it's because the stroke effect I applied is actually what's giving most of the body to the neon. If I turn off these effects, this is the actual layer before the effects are applied. So the mask is only erasing these little bits of the line. And then the stroke comes in and creates all these nice rounded edges. So I'm just gonna kind of cruise around the neon here and just eyeball where maybe those gaps are. There's probably some method to it. If you make real neon signs, there's a gap every two feet or who knows what. I don't really need to know, I'm working in Photoshop. So uh, maybe two gaps per letter and I'll make sure I put a couple of gaps in the underline part. Yeah, something about like that and I'll turn these glow effects back on, and that is looking cool. All right, well, let me option click on this mask. We can take a look directly at the mask I just made, and I can actually use this mask for one more purpose. I'm gonna select all and Command C to make a copy of the mask. Then I'll exit the mask and Command D to deselect. Now, if I Command V and paste that, I have the contents of the mask now on a new layer. And if I drag that layer down below the neon, it actually gives me the look of some holes where maybe the neon plugs in or is connected to the sign. So I'm gonna take this layer and include it in the clipping mask with an option click, and I'll set it to multiply mode. So now it's kind of part of the metal sign. I'm just gonna make that a bit more subtle by blurring it a few pixels. I'm gonna blur it with a filter blur Gaussian blur and just go three pixels. And that makes it a bit more of a subtle part of the background. Okay, so one more step on this neon layer. I'm gonna select the neon layer and I'll scale it up a little bit with Command T or Transform. I wanna create just a little bit of a sense of dimension like the neon is raised off of the sign. So I'm holding Option to scale symmetrically and maybe just going to about right here. 
So return, and it's subtle, but I think it does give you just a little bit of depth. All right, well next let's take a look at changing the color on one of these neon shapes. And if you're finding this tutorial useful so far, please do hit that like button. That is much appreciated and be sure to subscribe. In the next tutorial, I'm going to share my secret formula for grungy stamped ink, which is fully adjustable and even has live type. All right, back to the neon for some color variation. The first thing I want to do is create a duplicate of my neon layer. So I'll use my go to method to do that, which is to hold option and then click and drag a copy. I'll rename this one to neon pink. And for the moment, I'm just going to turn off that original neon layer. Then to change the color of this neon, all I have to do is double click on the stroke effect, select the color, and I'm just going to adjust the hue of this color. I'll bring it up to kind of a light pink. All right. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the outer glow effect. I'll select the color and shift the hue, which makes it more of a neon pink. OK, and then same thing with the drop shadow effect. Color, shift the hue, and OK. So now we've got neon pink across everything. And the nice thing is that I already have a layer mask for these neon layers, and I can use the mask to choose which parts of the neon I want to show on which layers. So I'll select the mask on this layer, then M for the marquee tool, and I'll drag a selection around the text part. Then black is still my foreground color, so I can use Option Delete to fill that part of the mask with black and hide that part of the neon. I'll deselect that and turn off the neon pink for now, and then basically do the opposite thing on the original neon layer. I'll select the mask here and drag a selection around the underline and fill that with black using Option Delete. Deselect, and let's turn them both on. And it almost feels like turning on a neon sign, clicking these layers on. There's something really gratifying about it, and I think it's a testament to how cool neon is. All right, one final piece, and I think a little bit of fog in here will help bring the glow out and make it a bit more epic. I'm going to open this Atmosphere 141. Kind of a swirling fog. I will copy that and close it, and then paste it all the way on top. Then transform, and I just want to scale it down a little bit and kind of get it to be the width of my document, about like that. Then I'm going to set the blend mode here to linear dodge. And I'm going to make that sort of a dark blue fog by creating a hue saturation adjustment layer down here in my adjustment layers menu, hue saturation. Then I'll create a clipping mask so the adjustment layer only applies to the fog with an option click between the layers. Then in this hue saturation properties, I'm going to click on the colorize box and I'll set the hue to something in the purpley blues about 250. I'll bring the saturation up to 50 and then take the lightness down and make it fairly subtle. I'll set the lightness to negative 75. And with everything in place, as I often do, I'm going to kind of wrap it up with an adjustment layer over the top of the whole image. I'll create a levels adjustment layer and just give it a bit more contrast with the black level up at 11 and the white level down to about 240. And that wraps it up, the finished neon look. I really hope you enjoy experimenting with this technique. Please let me know in the comments below and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. You can always check out texturelabs.org for a huge library of textures. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.